Hi everyone, welcome back to Spring Boot Essentials. In this video, I promised to map the sort, but honestly, I don't think it's needed. Um, I was taking a look at the response, and we only have here the, the attributes unsorted, sorted, and uh, this empty. Honestly, uh, whoever is executing a call to this endpoint, it's already sending these attributes, so they know if this is sorted or not. So if it's not sorting, the problem is way deeper than trying to figure out how to map these guys. So let's uh, skip this one. If you guys uh, did uh, and would like to contribute, please uh, share your code with us in the comment section and uh, more people can use your, your code. So, uh, since we are not going to talk about this, uh, we already know how to map the response to pageable. What is important because whoever is executing a request to list have no idea how many elements we have and what page, what size, and the configuration that we have set. So, the pageable is important, the sort not so much for me. Now, let's work on the REST template and let's execute a request to create an object. Now, before we do that, let's go back to anime. I'm going to get rid of this uh, string URL and I'm going to wipe the, the table here. If I remember how to do that, there we go. So I deleted the URL, I dropped the table and I'm going to add one guy called Builder. Okay, so now when I start my service, we will go back to Spring Client. And uh, let's start cleaning up some things here. I'm going to remove this piece of code. And these guys, they will fail now. They will uh, throw 404. So what we can do, we can select all of them and then we can refactor. And then we just right here, test get with rest template. We are going to get into unit test in a couple videos. And uh, boom, we just comment this out. Okay, so this one will work because it will turn empty. And um, the next one is what we are trying to achieve. How do we send something to our server using REST template or any other um, API? Well, we have a couple options to execute post. We have uh, three, more precisely. First one is post for object that will do the same as the get for um, object. It will post and then it will return an object. Then we have uh, post for entity. It's almost the same thing, but it will return uh, the object wrapped into the response entity. Uh, post for location, honestly, I don't know. But the other one that's also used a lot is the exchange. So since post for entity and exchange, they will have the same return type and it's almost the same thing as the post for object. I'm going to explain the exchange and the post for object. So uh, before we create a post, we need an object. So let's say that we have here anime.builder and we are building a new anime. Let's think about a nice one. Dot, uh, builder dot name overlord and we are going to post for object the url is this one the string and then we just have to tell hey i'm going to execute a post request to this guy sending this object and I expect the jackson to map whatever is coming to my anime class and we introduce here overlord saved and then we control d control x and then we just change here dot get id and then we execute this guy And as you can see, we have overlord saved ID one. If we check the database, we refresh the table. We can see here overlord one. Now, how do we execute a request using REST template exchange? So I don't want this guy to 
create another overlord uh, I will create another enemy I need a new name I don't know if I use this one already uh, enemy dot builder dot name the nice one as well build so now the rest template dot exchange it requires you to send a bit more information so the first information let's copy here is the URL the second one and uh, now that you are sending we have to tell hey this is what kind of request it's a get it's a post it's a put in this case it is a post and then you have to tell hey what's the object and as you can see the object needs to be inside this request entity so you need to create an HTTP entity and inside the HTTP entity you send the object and then you can tell hey this is going to return what a string uh, or an object that uh, Jackson can map automatically and by doing this you have like the response entity exchange so enemy response entity if you want the object directly get body and then you have here the object so I can try this one Time gate And let's execute again. Okay, this uh, connection is hard. Execute again. So, this is not a bug on my application. There you go. We have Steins Gate saved ID2. So, if we're going to just execute uh, plain calls without having to be authorized uh, without having to send any token maybe just post for objects enough but uh, exchange it's a bit more powerful so what if you would uh, need to send headers for example let's say that you would like to specify the authorization or even if you want to tell this is uh, JSON well we can create a new method here and this method uh, can return HTTP uh, headers from Spring Framework HTTP and we can say hey create a JSON header and then you create uh, a new object HTTP headers and it just add a uh, HTTP headers dot set content type and application JSON you return these HTTP headers and you can set, uh, for example, HTTP headers dot set uh, bearer of, for example, and you can send the token. So there are several options for you. The important thing here for this training is that you just add here to your HTTP entity. Yep. There you go. And now if we execute again, okay, we are going to have uh, two Steins gates there. Okay, connection refused. There we go, ID uh, 3. So, this is how you execute post requests. So, now we can see how to execute put and delete. We are going to do that in the next video. Bye.